with YouTubers Wonderful Palettes here and today I'm going to be showing you an updated video of the Splashtop Remote Desktop Streamer and this basically allows you to control a computer over the internet from your iOS device or an Android device so I do have uh, both devices but since um, iOS and Android are very similar I will just use the iPhone because it's uh, the one that's been set up most so I've got the app installed here that is in here somewhere there it is now it doesn't actually fill the screen of the phone which is a shame um, it's not very convenient at all so I've got two PCs here, I've not actually got the streamer running, so I'm just going to launch it now. Let's close that. There it is up there, it's loading. And we can see my MacBook Air has popped up. So so it's found automatically and I can actually press the preferences here and we get this little window on the computer and it basically just allows you to update your Splashtop account you have to create an account to use it, Splashtop 2 all your settings here, you can enable automatic launch when you log in uh, password protection and you can enable the lock screen which means once you finish using the app and once you log off the computer if you know it near it, we'll uh, go back to the lock screen and it will eventually obviously go into sleep mode. Now you can aim, enable the blank screen so nobody can see what you're doing on a computer. However, I tried this and it wasn't the best, so I will leave it for now. You can also mute the sound. So when you do that, the sound will go from the computer to the iPhone and there will be no sound out of the computer itself. And then you can just hit to improve this product. So if you like iOS, it's sends diagnostics and usage and crashing and how well it actually performs and you've just got your security code that you create here and you've got your Wi-Fi IP address so it does work on local however if you're signed into your account then uh, I believe you can use it over the internet so that's all good and you can even close it and it says it's set to sleep after 10 minutes uh, it just warns you tonight you might want to set it to not sleep after 10 minutes. Press OK and it, see, it says that it's running in the background. So now I'm going to go onto my phone and we will type in our security code. So you can also tick to remember it here. So I'm just going to type that in. There we go. Tap OK. And we can see, and I'll pop it in this orientation. And you, you've just got some hints. So you've got the control bar, hints. Let's press continue. And there you go, you basically have a little I, iPhone, Mac, whatever you want to call it. And you, it'll actually mirror um, what I do on the Mac as well. So if I move the mouse on the Mac, it will mirror on the iPhone. So it's a bit out of focus here. Try and readjust the focus. There you go. And it actually puts it into a suitable resolution for the iPhone, which would of course be 960 by 640 on the iPhone uh, 5 or 4S because the oscillator, as you can see, if I take it away, you can see the black borders, it doesn't have the full screen support yet. You can see the map book as well, it also goes into a uh, lower resolution just to enable the usage of the iPhone. So you can have a good little time with this. Now what I would do basically to get you to control of the trackpad, and I'll show you what you can do here. You tap the little button up here, and that brings up the keyboard. If you press this button here, you get some options. Now just like the Photon web browser, you have a trackpad mode. So if you tap here, uh, the cursor gets bigger, and you can see if I move it on the phone, you will probably be able to see it. If I move the phone away, focus on the Mac again, 
There you go. So now, see if I move it on the phone, it moves on the computer, and you can see the phone scrolling to keep the adjustments all right. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to focus mainly on the iPhone, and first I'm going to go into Safari. Now I already have a tab open in Safari, and you can see in the background it's uh, open there. So what I can do is, there's left click and right click, they're a bit faint, but you see, if I hold down left click and move this along here, it works just fine. I'm going to full screen mode. And there you go. Let's focus that again. There you go. And, yeah, it is quite nice actually. And you can use it to play uh, sort of basic flash games, but the whole point really is that since there is now a flash browser available for iOS, and I reviewed that in my previous video yesterday, is that uh, there is much point in using this just to get a proper flash browser because there is one available. The whole point of it really is just if you want to use uh, documents away from the computer that are on stuff like Microsoft Word. So also I'm going to click, I'm going to just uh, I'm not going to close Safari completely because I want to keep this tab, I'm just going to exit it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch uh, COD4. Now I know this is a bit of a funny test, uh, you wouldn't expect me to do that, but you might as well give it a go. It seems that it's not working on the iPhone. Here's the menus. So that doesn't work, so I'll leave that. Okay, so I'll try Minecraft instead. Alright, I think that worked. Let's have a look. So here we go, I'll just make this bigger. There we go, log in. And the graphics seem to actually be working quite well over my connection. So I've got my world here. Now obviously there will be a big disadvantage here, which is actually, you can see now the graphics have slowed down in the actual game. I have the graphics set to maximum because I have got uh, quite smooth graphics on my computer generally. So it's not too bad on here, but of course um, you it's you have to invoke the keyboard in order to move, and it actually just tries to type. You can't actually use the keyboard to move. So uh, once again, you you can't really use uh, Minecraft on this. And to get out of it, uh, you can just I'm just gonna try and get out of it here. Close that. Where's my cursor gone? Alright, oh, the game isn't paused, and that's why. So if I press escape, there you go. Save and quit. And let's quit from here. So it's not really a good alternative for playing games on. I mean, it might be alright on an iPad because the screen will be bigger, it is formatted for the iPad. So, uh, you use this for whatever you want to use it for, really. Um, uh, you might want to use it to, as I said, manage documents when you're not at the house or whatever. Uh, so, it is a nice little app for what it can do, but I don't use it too much. So, you also you still got clicking and dragging as well there, you can see. And then if I press the home button... You can see, it puts the mat to back onto the lock screen and you have to type in your password to log in and if you just tap cancel of course it will cancel itself eventually and it will just shut it off so there you go. I can't seem to get it to sleep the matter I'll just fold it down and we'll be done right so it isn't a bad app actually um, for what you pay for it it is universal so you can use it
on the iPad and iPhone. Uh, and also, just so I don't, to my video yesterday, I've got to mention this, is that the Photon Flash Browser from yesterday's video isn't in a universal app, so you will have to buy it twice in order to use it on the iPhone and on the iPad. So, just be aware of that. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you again in the next video.